is part 12 of WCF video series. In this video, we'll discuss how to make changes to WCF contracts in a backward compatible manner so that it doesn't break the existing clients. This is continuation to part 11, so please watch part 11 before proceeding. Now I must tell you that I have modified the employee service and the client applications so that the state of both of these applications is similar to how it was at the end of part 8 in this video series. So if you want to follow along, make sure you, you make those changes as well. Now if you notice this employee service contract here, uh, these operation contracts, get employee, save employee, they're using employee object. And if you look at the employee class, it's actually a data contract. So our employee service now is making use of data contracts instead of message contracts. After a WCF service is deployed on the production server, the Vistal document shouldn't be changed in any way that would break the existing clients. This is because the clients have already generated the proxy classes and the relevant configuration to interact with our service. If we intend to make changes, those changes should be done in such a way that they support backward compatibility. In general, WCF contracts are version tolerant by default. The data contract serializer, which is the default engine for serialization in WCF, allows missing non-required data and ignores any superfluous data for service contracts, data contracts, and message contracts. For a full list of changes and the impact that these changes could have on the existing clients, refer to this MSDN article. Now when we navigate to this article, notice the table right here. Basically this table lists all the service contract changes and the impact that these changes could have on the existing clients. Now when we add new parameters to an operation signature, clients are unaffected. That's basically because new parameters are initialized to their default values at the service side. Let me explain what I mean. Let's say for example here get employee is expecting ID parameter. Now if we go ahead and add a new parameter to this operation contract, okay, so obviously we need to make that change within the implementation as well. Let's run the host. So the host is running now. Let's run the client as well. So get employee. Look at that. It's working as expected. Okay. In spite of adding a new parameter to this get employee method. Now what actually happens here when we add new parameters to an existing operation contract and if the client doesn't send any values for those new parameters because the existing clients doesn't know about this new parameter okay so they are not going to send any data for this parameter so what's going to happen at the service side is this parameter will be initialized to its default value and the client is unaffected okay so adding new parameters to an existing operation contract this change will not affect the existing clients Similarly, removing parameters from an existing operation signature, again, clients are unaffected because when we remove an existing parameter, okay, if we remove an existing parameter, the client will continue to send data for that existing parameter, okay? And what happens at the service side is the service will simply ignore that extra data that is coming in and obviously that data will be lost at the service but the clients are unaffected the client will continue to send data for those parameters that we have removed the service will simply ignore them and the data will be lost at the service but the client will not get any exception okay so adding or removing parameters from an existing operation contract you know these changes will not affect the client modifying parameter types this change may or may not impact the existing clients depending on whether the parameter types are compatible. For example, let's say, you know, this ID parameter initially it is of type integer. Now let's change the type of this parameter to date time. Okay. Now, obviously the existing clients will continue to send data for this parameter. So once the data arrives at the service, the service will try to convert the data to date time data type. 
if the service is successful in doing that conversion then no problem the client is unaffected on the other hand if the service is not able to do that conversion because the types are not compatible obviously an exception will be thrown okay and the same is the case with modifying types for return values if the types are compatible client unaffected otherwise an exception will be thrown adding new operations now this doesn't affect the client because when we add new operation contracts so let's say for example to this let's put it how it was now to this service contract if I add maybe a new operation contract let's say get employee name by ID and let's pass an ID and this is an operation contract so when we add a new operation contract now this service has got two three operation contracts but the existing clients who have already built their Vistal uh, I mean the proxy classes and the configuration they will know only about these two operation contracts they will not know about this third operation contract so they will not be able to invoke this operation contract but the new clients you know they will know about this because they have just generated uh, proxy classes based on the Vistal document the Vistal the new Vistal document contains get employee name by ID um, operation contract as well so they will be able to invoke this method but the existing clients will not know about this method so uh, they will not be able to invoke it but they won't receive any exception they will continue to work in the same way removing operations will impact the existing clients if they try to call that operation for example let's say let's get rid of this operation contract here now let's comment this save employee operation contract let's close the host that's already running so at the moment this service has made only so we have an error that's basically because this has to be an integer type let's go ahead and run the host okay now the existing client who has already built their proxy classes you know they know that they're gonna have get employee and save employee method so our client that we have built before making you know the changes to the Vestal document look at this in button save we are invoking save employee method so when we run this and try to invoke that save employee look at this get employee will continue to work but if I try to save this employee let's say with ID 3 we get an exception so save employee cannot be processed at the receiver okay because that operation contract doesn't exist okay so removing an operation contract can have uh, an impact on existing clients and the second table here lists the changes that we can make to a data contract and the impact that these changes could have on the existing clients now adding new non required members to an existing data contract clients are unaffected okay look at this it's a new non required member now how can we make a specific member required or not required if you look at the data contract so here let's uncomment this if you look at this employee class this is a data contract and within this we have got several data members okay and this data member attribute has got is required parameter okay so if we set this parameter to true obviously that member is required now when I for example add a new member so let's add city as a new member and city is going to be string type and let's set order to 6 now this is a new non required member so we are changing the data contract we are adding a new non required member the existing client is unaware of this new member so obviously the existing client is not going to send any data for this member so which means you know this member will be initialized to its defaults and then it will be inserted into the data um, table with whatever default value that we specify but then there won't be any exception sent to the client let's actually look at that in action 
So we have a non-required member here. So let's go to the table first. And at the moment, if you look at this table, it doesn't have city column. Let's actually alter this table to have a city column. And we want to add city column. And let's set the data type to care of 50. And obviously, get employee and save employee the procedures, whichever service calls, we need to modify those procedures as well. So we have SP get employee. So let's go ahead and modify the stored procedure. And to get the text of that stored procedure, use SP underscore help procedure. Get the text and let's quickly change the implementation of this one to, re to return city as well. Okay, so let's modify this stored procedure. And similarly, we need to modify save employee, SP save employee. So let's copy the text of that. And then to the save employee, let's first change create to alter. We need to pass city and this is of type and we care of 50 and let's initialize I mean let's specify a default value of null for that so if you don't have uh, a value for this parameter then null be null will be inserted into the table so let's also pass at city to this method I mean to this insert statement and let's execute this all right, so we are done from the database side. So let's go to the service itself. And if you look at the service, this employee object has got now um, city data member. So obviously, when we get an employee, we need to initialize that uh, property. Similarly, when we try to save it, we need to add value for that parameter. So let's get to the service implementation. So within the service implementation here, we have uh, you know annual salary and city so city equals let's copy this and paste it right there and let's change this to city and let's do the same thing in this block as well all right so that is going to you know cater for get employee now let's get to save employee so we are saving the employee object here. So let's copy these lines and then create a new SQL parameter. And let's call this parameter city. So the name of the parameter is at city. Employee object has got city property. So use that. And we want to add this parameter city to this command object. All right. So we are done with these changes. Let's stop the service that's already running. Let's run the host once again. OK, the service is hosted. Now let's get to the client. So let's run the client. So the client doesn't know about the new data member that we have added. And if you look at the new data member that we have just added, it's a non-required data member. OK, so obviously, the client is not going to send data for this uh, data member. OK, so what happens at the service side? It will be initialized to its defaults, and the default value will be stored in the database table. Let's actually look at that in action. So when we say get an employee, so obviously, city will not be displayed. We are not having that field at all. Now Let's save this employee as how many employees we have in the table at the moment. We have two employees. So let's save this employee with ID 3. Look at that employee is saved. And if you look at select star from TBL employee, look at what happened to city. It's basically null for the third employee because the client didn't send data for that non-required new data member. And obviously, you know, the service has initialized it to defaults and then it, it worked in the same way as it was before. 
All right. Now what is going to happen when we make it required? Let's see that. Let's actually make it required by specifying is required name to property. And let's set that to true. Okay. Now we are adding a new required member and the existing client doesn't know about this. So let's close the host. Let's run this once again. Let's get to the client now and let's try to save this employee as number four. Okay. So get, let's actually get an employee. Um, let's get employee two. So get will continue to work the same way. Now let's try to save it with ID four. Look at this, we get an error. The formatted through an exception while trying to deserialize the message. And look at this, you know, it says employee service is not expected, expecting element city. Instead, it has got element hourly pay. Okay, keep in mind the type of employee that we were trying to add is part time employee. Now, after, if you look at the employee service here, after employee type, it is actually expecting city. But instead, you know, the client didn't send data for this. So obviously this is a required field. Okay, that's why it throws this, that exception. Okay, so instead of city, it was getting hourly pay because for part-time employee, if you look at this part-time employee here, hourly pay hours worked, you know, the order should be after employee type, it should have received city, but instead it got hourly pay. And that's why it threw an exception saying that there's a required field. I expected to have a value for that. I don't have a value. And that's why it's saying, you know, this error right there. Okay. So basically, if you look at this table here, adding a new non-required member doesn't throw an exception, but adding a new required member is going to throw an exception. Okay. Similarly, removing non-required members, nothing is going to happen. It doesn't affect the client, but the existing clients will, will continue to send data for that non-required member. Okay. And that data will be ignored and lost at the service side. Okay. Similarly, if we remove required member, obviously an exception will be thrown. And modifying exist, existing member types, are, you know, basically the same rules apply as that of modifying parameter types, you know, within an operation contract. Okay. If the types are compatible, no exception. Otherwise, an exception will be thrown. Okay. So basically, whenever we make changes to our service contracts, data contracts, or message contracts, you know, we need to keep these things in mind so that we don't make changes which would break uh, existing clients. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.